Hi, I am Jennifer Foxworthy, the founder and CEO of Inspirationally Speaking and the founder of the Unstoppable You Women's Conference. I am delighted to bring this video that was taken at my second annual Unstoppable You Women's Conference in York, Pennsylvania on Saturday, November 15, 2014. Nakisha Muldrow was one of the presenters and she was absolutely amazing as she shared her transparent testimony called Redefining Your Experiences. I hope you enjoy. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon. Thank you, Jen, for that great introduction. I always love the spirit you put behind everything. Um, and also, I want to thank Jen for bringing back the Unstoppable You Conference to York. Um, I was not able to make the first one, so I was so excited that she came back. And I was even more excited that she asked me to participate. Um, I also want to thank my family who came to support me and the conference. Wave, wave your hand, guys. <laughs> and close friends. Thank you, guys. Everybody knows how I am with my family, so without them, there, there is no me. Um, they know that. Um, I want to start by trying to gauge the audience. I um, just want to ask you a few questions, and if you feel comfortable, raise your hand. If you do not feel comfortable, don't feel compelled to raise your hand. Um, has anyone in the crowd ever, or has anyone in the crowd been a teenage mother? Okay. Anyone, has anyone, anyone ever been in any sort of abusive relationship, mental and or physical? Has anyone pursued higher education while having a job and a family? Has anyone been a victim of sexism or racism? Has anyone gone through any financial hardships? I should probably get the room on this one. Get the room? Yeah. I'm looking for the person that doesn't raise their hand because we're going to ask them for money. Okay. Um, if you noticed, I raised my hand for all of those. So, as I thought of this conference, and I thought about what message did I want to bring? What did I want to say? I thought about all those experiences, and I thought about even more. Um, I knew I was not the only one who had been side sidetracked by life. Um, but I wondered, what are the differences that allow for some people to let those experiences define them? And for others, on the flip side, create a platform for others to redefine those experiences. And as I thought about that, I thought that would be a great topic for the conference, redefining your experiences. The definition of redefining is to re-examine or reevaluate, especially with a view to change. View is the word that stood out to me. A view is something out in front of you. So you're within my view. A view to change is that I'm seeing the change out in front of me. So how we view things contribute to the outcome. If we view a situation in the worst possible way, it increases the chance of a negative outcome. Because we set ourselves up to only accept a negative outcome. Our viewpoints play a huge role in redefining our lives. Redefinition can propel you past some negative stereotypes, like 50% of teen mothers never graduate from high school. If you're a teen mom, be the 50% that does graduate high school. That less than 2% of teen moms earn a college degree by the age of 30. Be in the 2%. That a high percentage of women stay or even return to abusive relationships. Be the person who gets out. So let's step back through this. Understand that experiences are meant to mold you, not break you. But, whatever hap but what happens is that we decide, without even knowing, to carry our bad experiences around with us. Yes. Several years ago, I watched Juanita Bynum at a Woman's Hour at Loose conference deliver a powerful message entitled, no more sheets. Amen. If you have not seen this, I'm telling you, go out, YouTube it, watch it, it's powerful. Yes. She illustrated the, all the internal junk that she was carrying around by tying sheets around her waist. So as she went through each experience,
she tied another sheet and another until she had tied so many sheets around herself that she could barely move. Mm. This message demonstrated how our experience can bound us, how they slow us down, even stop us right in our tracks. Those sheets become your fear blanket. Mm -hmm. And notice I did not say security blanket. Mm -hmm. It's not a place of security. It's a place of fear. And fear is the devil's way of stopping forward progress. Yes. Yes. So when you hear words like, no, you can't, you're ugly, you're fat, you're nothing, you can retreat into your fear blanket because you've allowed yourself to, come, to become comfortable there. You're now so covered up and protected that you can't even notice God trying to shine his light on you wow. and your situation. We even choose at times to return to these type of situations because we miss our blanket. You're wrapped up so tight that you won't allow God to cover you with his grace because you'd rather be covered with fear. See, God may let us sit in our situations for a while because he's trying to teach us some valuable lessons. But he never intends for us to stay there. That's right. Amen. That's right. Stuck in your anger, yes. stuck in despair, stuck in pain, stuck in heartache. Yeah. To be unstoppable means you must push through. Right. Experiences foster our growth, which means mothers, that we should not shield our children from everything. All those life experiences. They need those in order to build their emotional growth. They may fall down, but they're gonna find strength in picking themselves back up. The same concept applies for adults. So when my sister got shot a couple years ago, she came to stay with me through her recovery. <laughs> I started to notice that she was slipping into a depression to the point where I could hardly get her out of her room. I made a rough decision. After she was healed, I pressured her to move. I could tell she was hurt, but I just kept expressing my love and support. I knew if I didn't get her up and moving again, that she was gonna stay stuck. <coughs> and in that secluded spot for far too long. It was so hard for me to leave her and my nephew in this tiny little apartment for victims of domestic violence. I cried the whole way home, but I would not shed a tear in front of her. Till this day, as she's living her new life in South Carolina, Amen. she thanks me for that. She thanks me for not letting her stay stuck. And then we laugh about all the names that she secretly called me as I was driving away. I knew she did, but she took her a while to admit it. Did you know that over 22 million in the U.S. have been raped in their lifetime? That every 90 seconds, somewhere in America, someone is sexually assaulted, wow. Wow. that 15% of sexual assaults and rape victims are under the age of 12, oh, wow. and 44% are under the age of 18. That about one third of female murder victims, ages 12 or older, are killed by an intimate partner. And with those stats, we wonder why women experience twice the rate of depression as men regardless of race or ethnic background, that an estimated one in eight women contend with a major depression in their lifetime, and that depression is one of the top five health concerns of women. With all the pressures women face, how can we do it all, look good doing it, do it well, and stay sane? 
You have to find your center. Uh, it's funny Kelly was up here doing Tai Chi because that's actually a wonderful place to find your center. It's a lot of breathing, it's a lot of fluid movements, but you have to find your center. Uh, you have to find a spot that feels good. You can, a, a, a spot that feels so good that you can hit the reset button. A place free of interruptions. A calm place to think. We minimize our need for this type of self-therapy because we're always tending to the needs of others. We're, we're always moving that next mountain out the way. But it's during those calm moments when our minds are clear that we can truly reflect and we can breathe in the positive and we can exhale some of the negative. When I think of times when my life was the most chaotic, I was always running on empty. More worried about non-important things than important things than just plain tired. I remember as a teen, never really feeling good enough, feeling a little lost and incomplete. And those feelings sadly stay with me for many years. I learned to overcompensate with jokes, lots of laughter. But inside I felt like I was dying. I made sure I didn't let anyone else too far into my dark place until I met him. There's always a him in stories like this. <laughs> then I moved away with him, the same him who gave me my three beautiful children, but made my dark world even darker. I lived in a fog for at least seven years. I would leave, I would come back, I would leave again, I come back again, endless cycle of madness, plagued with violence and pain. But to the average person, we were the perfect little couple wow. with two adorable daughters traveling from duty station to duty station. Then one morning, a morning I can remember like yesterday, it was spring breeze was blowing. I woke up. I looked at my baby boy laying next to me in the bed. And I sat on the edge of my bed. And I just thought about the rest of my life. And in a very calm, uneventful way, I just said, I'm done. Funny, I thought those words would come in a big explosion. Uh, a big argument, a big fight. They didn't. They came during my moment of clarity. Mm -hmm. They came during my calm, that's peaceful good. moment. Yes, that's good. And then that's when my life started. I enrolled at your college. I worked two jobs for several years to survive as a single mom and put my kids through private school. Near graduation, I was hired with Wellspan to supervise, and this is funny, the same emergency depart department that I had visited years prior with a concussion from abuse. I met the man of my dreams. I'm gonna blush now. This is my blushing moment. My best friend and became his wife. I gave two bonus kids. One bonus is here, which makes us a family of seven. I graduated with my bachelor's degree, went back for my master's. I experienced several promotions due to the growth at Wellspan. Now I'm a corporate employee with over seven departments across two counties and approximately 200 indirect reports. I recently graduated with my master's, like Jen mentioned, and uh, I think I'm done. <laughs> no one believes me, so I'll just say right now I'm done. I spent so many years in pain and sadness from childhood until my early 20s that it makes me appreciate my happiness and my joy and my life so much more. Even through the occasional setback, I can still praise God. I can still say, it could be worse, 
because I've seen worse. My husband always jokes with me about how oppositional I am. It's true, but he's not here, but I'm gonna tell you it's true. <laughs> I tell him, no, I'm not. Um, so when someone told me that I was young with three kids and I would never amount to much, that was a challenge. And I was determined to make sure that the exact opposite would be the case. So I could have left my sheets tied around my waist. I could have stayed wrapped up in my fear blanket, but I let it go. I couldn't take all that into my new life. I had to be an example for my children. I had to break the chains. I wanna leave you all with a few points that I hope you feel will be helpful as you travel through your personal journey of redefining your experiences. Number one, forgiveness. Yes, I dropped the F-bomb. <laughs> that dreaded word, forgiveness. That's easy to say, but so hard to execute. That's right. I encourage you as you work through the process to forgive others, that you don't negate forgiving yourself. Amen. I say this because I can personally beat myself up better than anybody else can. But how can you truly forgive someone else if you haven't fully forgiven yourself? Number two, let go. The weight of what you're carrying around is crippling you. Untie your sheets. It will be a process, but it's worth it. Number three, be honest. We can be the most honest person around and still lie to ourselves. Right. Trick ourselves into believing that the pain and hostility that we've buried so deep inside doesn't even actually exist. But yet each time you face a difficult situation, it rears its ugly head. That's right. That's right. Number four, be patient. We will continue to move through life's up and ups and downs. We will be throwing curveballs, unfortunate situations, However, your patience and belief in brighter days will get you through. And lastly, redefine. Find the positive in your negative. Look at yourself and say, yes, that happened to me, and I'm a better person because of it. Amen. Tap into your humility and understand that certain experiences that you're placed in, you're placed in for a reason because you may be able to help the next person push through. Redefining is your opportunity for an internal makeover. So I have a challenge. Let's all commit to feeling beautiful inside and out. Amen. I want to close with a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. A woman is like a tea bag. You never know how strong it is until you put it in hot water. All right. Thank you all for your time and attention. I truly enjoyed speaking with you. God bless you all. God bless you.